We're continuing in chapter 12. As you recall, when we started the chapter, we talked about the three places we would visit in this chapter. We started out in the mountains. Here we have the Rocky Mountains, if you remember, and we talked about the mountains that were in Hawaii and in Alaska. These are volcanic mountains completely, the Aleutian Mountains. We talked about some mountains in Washington, the Olympic Mountains, and some in California. And then today we're moving to the Great Basin, this large area. Here's a picture of part of the Great Basin. And we know the Great Basin covers many western states. That's what we get to read about and find out about today. I hope that you remember our mountain chapter, our lesson, and all the animals that lived there, and Yellowstone National Park. Let's see if we can focus it. That has experienced wildfire and has given firefighters and scientists a chance to study that in, in very closely. We um, looked at the peaks of the different Rocky Mountains and Sierra Nevada, and I hope you had time to look at these pages, very, very fascinating pages, but again, the point of our, our short um, YouTube is just to read the chapter with you in case there's some um, difficult words and things, so we're going to move on to climates in the West, and again, here's our Western states on this small map, and the Great Basin here is marked in purple. You can see it covers quite a few states. So, let's get going. You are there. It's below zero, and the wind is blowing across the frozen tundra. You and your team of dogs are waiting at the starting line of the Iditarod. The race is the most famous dog sled race in the world. You will race for more than a thousand miles between Anchorage and Nome, Alaska. You hear the announcer yell, Go! The dogs dash forward and your sled flies from the starting line. The cold air stings your face as your sled picks up speed. The crowd by the side of the trail cheers as you ride off into the Alaskan wilderness. And the picture at the bottom of the page, sled dogs. You'll notice they have little booties on their feet. This race, again, if you read the caption, 10 to 17 day race. So you and the dogs would be on the trail for quite a few days. And you would meet weather and all kinds of conditions. So as we look at this picture and try to get it into focus, we always want to read the pictures and the captions. This is Mount McKinley. Another name for it is Denali, and it's the tallest mountain in North America. So let's move it where we can, can read. I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit so we can read this page. The frosty north. You saw that mountain picture. You can still see yours. Very, very snowy and icy. Many areas of the western region of the United States have very cold winter temperatures. The tundra in Alaska, where the Iditarod is held, is one of those places. A tundra is cold, flat area where trees cannot grow. Remember we read earlier about the tree line, where if you went higher up a mountain, the trees would not be able to grow beyond that height. Well, this is a place on our planet that is cold and flat, and it is an area where trees cannot grow. It's not the same as the tree line, because this is just a cold, flat area. And the other was up the side of a mountain and very, very high. Think about these Alaskan temperatures and you will understand how cold it really is there. In Barrow, Alaska, in the northern part of the state, the average temperature in February is minus 11 degrees Fahrenheit. The record low temperature was recorded on January 23, 1971. On that day in Prospect Creek, Alaska, the temperature dropped to minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 80 degrees below zero. To understand how cold this is, remember water freezes at 32 above zero. Not all of Alaska has these frigid or very cold temperatures. Frigid means very cold. Parts of southern Alaska have temperatures that range between 28 degrees Fahrenheit and 55 degrees Fahrenheit during the whole year. 
Some of the other states in the West also have cold tem winter temperatures. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and parts of Washington have wintry temperatures and heavy snowfall. For example, the average temperature in January in Idaho is only 23 degrees Fahrenheit. The cold, snowy weather in parts of the West attracts thousands of tourists each year. People enjoy winter sports. They downhill ski and snowboard in the mountains. Other winter activities that people enjoy are cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, dog sledding, and ice fishing. Tourists also enjoy the scenery, such as Alaska's majestic Mount McKinley. It is the highest peak in North America, and remember we read another name for it is Denali. At 20,320 feet, its peak is covered with snow year-round. There it is at the top of your page as we get ready to turn. Denali, Mount McKinley. On the next page, we move to a different kind of climate. As you can see at the bottom of your page, if you're looking, or I'll move it up here, you can see this is from very, very snowy and cold to tropical. Uh, let's see if we can focus. A tropical rainforest in Hawaii. Totally different. Let's read about it. A region of many climates is our title. Doesn't like it when I move the book around a lot, does it? Let's see what we can do here. Unlike the wintry areas of the northern part of the region, parts of the west have warm weather throughout the year. Temperatures in some parts of California and Hawaii, for example, rarely drop below freezing, even in the middle of winter. Hawaii has a tropical climate. People who live there and visitors all enjoy the warm, wet climate of Hawaii year-round. The islands have tropical rainforests where the plants grow large and full. California is such a large state that it has a variety of climates. Overall, though, California has two main seasons, rainy season in the winter, dry season in the summer. Temperatures in Southern California are warm all year. Temperatures in Northern California are cool in the winter is what it says. There we go. But rarely below freezing. Winter weather does come to parts of California. Freezing temperatures and snow can be found in the mountains in winter. Yet another climate can be found in California. There are deserts in Southern California in the interior of the state. Death Valley is a desert area in Southern California. At the top of the next page, we see the Great Basin introduced in our chapter, our lesson finally, and here's a picture like we saw before. Death Valley is actually part of the Great Basin, a desert region in the West. It includes most of Nevada and parts of Oregon, Utah, Idaho, and Wyoming. The word basin usually means a wide, shallow bowl for holding liquids. The reason that this part of the country is called a basin is that the water from its streams drains into the area instead of into rivers that lead to an ocean. One place the water drains into in the Great Basin is the Great Salt Lake in Utah. The Great Basin gets very hot on summer days. There are few trees. The desert shrubs that grow there need only small amounts of water to survive. Here we have a map again, and here's the Great Salt Lake right here on the map. And you move the Rocky Mountains. When the rain falls on the Rockies, this is the Continental Divide follows this. So some of the rain that falls, if it falls just to this side, it flows to these rivers and out to the Atlantic Ocean. The rain that falls just to this side may flow into the Great Basin and go nowhere, or it may get into some of the rivers and flow out to the Pacific Ocean. Let it rain and snow. Precipitation in the West varies greatly. On average, fewer than two inches of rain fall each year in Death Valley, California. In fact, from October 3, 1912 to November 8, 1914, part of Death Valley had no precipitation at all. That's more than two years without rain. 
However, the West is also known for record snowfalls. One of the largest snowfalls in one year was recorded at Rainier Paradise Ranger Station in Washington in the early 1970s. In one year, 1,122 inches of snow fell. Silver Lake, Colorado has experienced one of the largest snowfalls in a 24-hour period, 76 inches. That's more than six feet of snow in one day. Some parts of the West are very rainy. The wettest place on Earth is Mount Wayaliali, Wayaliali in Hawaii. The average yearly rainfall on the mountain is 460 inches or more than 38 feet of water. Part of Washington or parts of Washington are also very wet. The high mountains in the Cascade Range greatly affect the surrounding area. West of the Cascade and much of the Olympic Peninsula of Washington, precipitation averages more than 135 inches or more than 11 feet per year. In contrast, areas east of the Cascades receive much less rain. For example, Yakima, Washington receives less than 8 inches of rain per year. The reason for this difference is in effect called the rain shadow. Winds from the Pacific Ocean bring warm, moist air east. This warm air rises and forms clouds. The winds push the clouds up against the mountains. As the clouds rise, they become cooler. Cool air cannot hold as much moisture as warm air, so much of the water falls back to earth as rain or snow on the western side of the mountains. By the time the clouds have passed to the eastern side of the mountains, they carry very little moisture. Therefore, the eastern side of the Cascade Range receives less rain than the western side. The land east of the Cascades lies in what we call the rain shadow. So let's take a look at this diagram, this picture. Rain shadow is a pretty interesting thing. We know that the ocean brings the warm, moist air in. The air has, the water from the ocean has been evaporating and it's got the air full of warm moisture. And as it begins to rise, because you know warm air rises, we've talked about that many times, as it begins to rise, it gets cooler, but it's also drifting across the land. It gets cooler, and as it gets cooler, it can no longer hold the moisture, so it forms big, big rain clouds and drops the rain. After the rain drops, the clouds drift on, but it has, they're not, the air is no longer full of moisture, and it's also cool, so now cool begins to sink. Remember, warm air rises, cool air sinks. So as it was rising, it was cooling, but it also caused it to drop its load of moisture. As it got very cool, it begins to sink. It becomes very dry, and it has lost the moisture all on this side of the mountains before it got to the other side. That's called the rain shadow. One more quick thing. I know this is getting kind of long. This is a tropical, whoops, this is a, not anything, so we can focus. A tropical flower you might have to check out in your own book. Anyway, it kind of looks like a bird flying, as you can see, and that's why it's called a bird of paradise.